Hey guys, so here we are back uh, taking a look at our Heimdall screen for the home media server that we've been working on uh, for the last couple of weeks. And here you can see that we've got Open Media Vault and Docker and Portainer Plex, and I've got uh, Riot.im installed, but I don't have that on here just yet. Um, but what I wanna do is actually expand on this Plex functionality. And to do that, we're gonna take a look at a, a service called Tautoli. And it's a third party application that you run alongside Plex Media Server um, that gives you a lot of additional uh, statistics about what's going on with your server. And here we've actually got, if I take a look over at this page here, uh, this shows me what's going on currently. Uh, my kid's watching uh, Brave right now on his TV. Uh, you can see uh, other TV shows that we've been watching lately, uh, how many plays each one of them has, uh, what the uh, most popular shows are and how many users have been watching them. Of course, all of these are uh, just one. That's one user. That's me and my wife uh, sharing an account watching these in the evenings. <clears throat> um, and it also shows things like most concurrent streams. Uh, looks like we've had two of those. Uh, it shows mo what was most recently watched uh, over here. Um, and most recent platforms, of course, Roku, uh, that's the TV I've got in my bedroom, whereas my kid's got uh, a Chromecast plugged into his TV. Um, and it just gives a lot of really great information to give you an idea of who's watching what, um, you know, how many, uh, you know, under kids' movies, we've got 73, and under regular movies, we've got 198 and TV shows, we've got 17 series, <clears throat> or excuse me, 17 different shows with a total of 104 seasons and almost 1,700 episodes. Um, so a lot of this stuff is 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 probably available in Plex, but sometimes it's nice to get uh, a bit more uh, quick access to your data. And here, if we take a look, here's all of the different plays that have been done, um, you know, as far as when and who, uh, what, uh, what IP address they were on, what kind of a device they were on, uh, all of this kind of stuff. Uh, is very, very easily available in Tautoli. So what I wanna show in this video is actually how to install that. Uh, and it's actually pretty simple. We're gonna do it through Portainer, uh, just like we've done in the past. Uh, the last few videos that I've done have been done through Stacks, uh, but this time we're actually going to do it through Containers. Now, in order to make this work, there's some data that you're gonna need. Um, Basically, what you'll need is you'll need to be logged in to uh, your Open Media Vault account to uh, to get some absolute paths that we're going to need for the installation. Uh, you'll also need to come over here to this uh, hub.docker uh, URL that I'll have in the description uh, where you can uh, grab this information if you don't want to follow along. But what we're going to do is I'm going to pop this open into two separate screens here, two separate uh, little windows there. We're going to come back over here. We're going to click on Add Container. And I'm going to name this Tautoli. And then for the image, I'm going to just do Tautoli slash Tautoli. And then we're going to kind of go in each of these different variables down here. Uh, we're just going to come down to the advanced container settings and fill in the blanks. So the first thing that we see over here um, after we uh, give it a name is going to be uh, a volume, which is going to be a configuration volume. So let's go over here to volumes. Let's actually map two of these because we're gonna need one for uh, the configuration as well as one to go to the Plex logs. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and click on bind for both of those. And we're gonna do slash uh, config. And then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do this uh, slash Plex underscore logs colon RO. Um, so now we need to fill in the host, the absolute path to each of these. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back over here to Open Media Vault. I'm gonna right click in here and go to Inspect. And then I'm just gonna double click in here and copy this and then I'll close it and I'll come back to Portainer. There we go. Paste that in there and I'll do slash tau Tully. And then for the Plex logs, we're gonna do kind of the same thing here. Uh, what we're gonna do is go to, uh, we're gonna add Plex to that, but there's some more information that we need here. So <clears throat> what I've got going on over here, let me open that up in a big window. So this is um, all of the shared folders for, uh, the, for the, the home server that we've got set up here. Now I need to get into the log files in, uh, of Plex. And in order to get that, we're gonna go into the configuration folder. Then we're gonna go to Plex. Then we'll go to library, application support, Plex Media Server, and then logs. So we've got quite a bit to deal with there, but what I'm gonna to do to make this simple is I'm just gonna grab this out of the URL bar there. I'm gonna copy it, I'm gonna paste it in there, and then I'm just gonna go backtrack 
and I'm gonna switch the direction of those slashes. Oops, did that one too, wrong way. There we go. So that's all good to go there. Uh, again, that's kind of a long one uh, that we'll need in order to get direct access to these logs. And that's how uh, Tautoli is going to fill in each of its different pages is by reading the logs in that folder. Uh, so let's go ahead and minimize that now. Okay, so it looks like we're gonna need some environmental variables, variables here for PGID, PUID, and time zone. So let's go over here. We're gonna create three of these. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and fill these in with uh, PGID and PUID and uh, TZ. Now TZ is easy. Um, for me anyway, that's gonna be time zone. That's gonna be America slash Denver. And then in order to get the PGID and the PUID, what we need is the um, user, the, basically these are user identifiers for the admin account for your uh, Docker and Portainer. So what we'll do is we'll open up Putty, drag this up over here, and we'll uh, type in the IP address of our server. Uh, of course, yours here is going to be different, but go ahead and type that in. Click go, we're gonna log in as root, and we're gonna type in our password. And in order to get the ID of our admin account, at least mine is named admin, yours may be named something else, but mine is named admin. I'll just type in ID space admin and press enter. So my UID or uh, PUID is 998, my PGID is 100. So I can type in 998, PGID is 100. Um, <clears throat> so that is basically everything down to right there. The next thing we need to do is open up some ports here uh, to be 8181. So what we can do is go up here to where it says manually net or manual network port publishing. We'll just type 8181 and 8181, just like so. And that should be everything that we need to do here. Now we can click on deploy the container. And we'll give this uh, just a minute to do its thing. Okay, so now right down here, you can see that it's starting. And if we click on the logs file here, you can see that it's doing its thing over here. Okay, so this is all done now, so it should be good to go. Uh, it says that it's ready now, so that's good. What we'll do is we'll just come over to here and we're just gonna add a uh, colon or port 8181 there. We'll click uh, okay. Cool, so let's go ahead and make that full screen there. So now it's welcoming, it's doing a setup wizard and it says welcome here. So we'll click next. So we're gonna give it a username and password. I'm just gonna do admin and admin, uh, and then we'll click next. Now the next thing we need to do is actually sign in with our Plex account. So we'll go ahead and click on sign in. We'll go ahead and click sign in there as well. Great, so that says auth authentication was successful. Okay, so now it wants the IP address or host name. Um, so what I'm gonna do is actually just gonna click on this and uh, here you can see that it's giving us a bunch of different options here. And what I wanna look for actually um, is one that starts with 192, there we go, .168.1.19. Now this is a server that I've got active. So the, the one that's on this little server that we're working on right now doesn't have any data on it. Um, so I'm gonna need to use one that actually has some data for this to make sense. So this is the one that my family uses. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and click verify. Great, it says server found. I'm gonna click next. Uh, activity logging, we can go ahead and leave that as normal. Uh, notifications is fine. And we'll go ahead and click finish. Okay, we'll go ahead and click sign in. And sign in. Great, so this is saying uh, that it's uh, the most recent version here. And close. So now you can see that um, this Tautoli, which is on this uh, 236 address, looks a whole lot like uh, the Tautoli for uh, my Bruce Banner .local, and that's because it should. It's pulling the exact same data from the exact same logs. Um, so of course yours is gonna look different here, but that's how you can go ahead and get Tautoli installed on your Open Media Vault home server. Okay guys, there's how to install Tautoli on your Open Media Vault slash Docker Portainer setup so that you can get way more data about your Plex server. So pretty simple process, uh, only took a few minutes to get going uh, and collects all kinds of great data to kind of give you more idea of what's going on. If you found the video helpful, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up, it would help me out a ton. Uh, and I think with all that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.